Hi, I'm Dennis Dawson. Let's talk about balancing workload on your Kafka clusters. I'll start with a quick overview of the components of a Kafka cluster, then talk about reasons you might need to rebalance your cluster in a production system. A Kafka cluster receives data from producers. Producers create messages called topics. This is where Kafka comes in. A Kafka cluster is comprised of one or more servers called brokers. Topics are stored in partitions. A Kafka broker is assigned as a leader that handles read and write requests for each partition. Kafka assigns zero or more followers that passively replicate the leader partition. Replicating across a configurable number of servers provides fault tolerance should a broker go offline. By replicating across multiple brokers, Kafka guarantees that data is preserved. Consumers of the data partition can expect a steady flow of information from the cluster regardless of the broker providing the data. A producer might produce multiple topics. Each gets its own unique partition, with replicas distributed between brokers in the cluster. Multiple producers can send multiple topics, with each topic getting its own partition. Consumers are typically organized as groups, distributing the responsibility for consuming the partitions from the Kafka cluster. What you see here is a schematic of a small but happy Kafka implementation humming along with everything in balance. There are two common situations that cause a Kafka cluster to go out of balance. Failure is when one of the brokers goes offline. Success means that you might have to add more brokers to accommodate additional workload. Let's take a closer look at what happens when one of your brokers goes offline. Inevitably, one of your brokers will fail at one time or another. Its leader partitions go offline. A replica on another broker in the cluster becomes the leader for the partition. This puts an additional load on other brokers in the Kafka cluster. When the machine comes back online, it has no leaders assigned. That means it's sloughing off while the other machines take on additional load. The other machines become resentful. In order to handle this scenario, Kafka implements leader rebalancing, or the more accurate term, preferred leader election. When you create a partition, Kafka keeps track of which machine was configured as the leader. At some point in time, after machine number one is back up and in a good state, it will say, hey, I'm the leader, let's restore my partition. Preferred leader election is included by default with Cloudera Manager. Leader restoration should happen automatically unless you disable it. After five minutes with all the systems back up, all of the leaders should once again be on their originally configured broker. However, if it was a very long crash, it will take a very long time to catch up on replication. It's important to note that there's a small chance of data loss during preferred leader replication. By default, only the leader acknowledges that a message has been written. Act. If you configure your producer with the Kafka request required X set to minus one, all replicas must acknowledge writes before the system considers the message delivered. For safety, ask for max X. The other common scenario involves a very successful Kafka cluster that needs to add more brokers to handle additional workload. Let's say you have three servers. While the earlier example had only a few partitions, these have a more realistic number of 50 partitions apiece. They live in balance and harmony for a time and become very popular with the cool kid. They continue to grow to something like, I don't know, 150 partitions. Kafka distributes the work evenly between the servers. At some point, you will approach 70% of disk space or CPU resources. The natural thing to do is add another machine, but this by itself won't resolve the problem. New topics get assigned to the new machine, but the workloads of the other servers remain the same. They also receive an equal share of new jobs. 
What you really want is for all of the jobs to be distributed amongst the four servers. You can address this type of Kafka imbalance with partition reassignment. Kafka has a tool named Kafka Reassign Partitions. In a perfect world, that command would just reassign the partitions for you. However, the partition reassignment tool currently can't automatically study the data distribution in a Kafka cluster and move partitions around to attain an even load distribution. The process, unfortunately, is painfully manual. You create a list of topics that you want to move. Moving entire topics is easier than moving partitions. Next, you use the generate command to list the distribution of partitions and replicas on their current brokers. It then gives you a list of suggested locations for those partitions on the new brokers. Copy and paste things around until you're happy with the arrangement and save the results as a new JSON file. Use the execute command to start the redistribution process. Kafka understands that this is the new description of the partitions. It starts with the empty containers, then copies data between them. This process can take over the entire system for several hours in some cases. Use the Verify option to check the status of your partitions. <coughs> if Franz Kafka were here today, he would want you to remember this above all else. Do not procrastinate. Never do this when your system is at 98% capacity. While it is a painful, manual process to reassign partitions, you want to anticipate your system's growth and redistribute when your system is at 70% capacity. If you wait until you're forced to redistribute, it might be too late, and the redistribution process will be excruciatingly slow at the limits of your resources. You can read more about Kafka administration by visiting docs.cloudera.com. Follow the link to documentation for the Cloudera distribution of Apache Kafka. You can also check out the documentation on kafka.apache.org.